Hi, thanks for joining me for this week's midweek chat. Today I got to sit down with Darren Sharp, who is working with Compassion Ireland, and their aim is to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. And so he gives us an update for those of us in Life Church who are sponsoring children in Togo, as well as、um, some information on how the coronavirus is affecting third world countries, as well as ways that we can help and, and pray. And so I just enjoyed my time. Hope you will enjoy this today as well. So God bless you. So I have Darren Sharp with me today, and just、um, really glad that he is able to come and share with us for our midweek chat here.、Um, Our life church in Port Leash, and、uh, Darren works with Compassion Ireland, and I've met him a number of years ago, and he was just sharing kind of his story and his heart. And then I believe it was last year we had you come. It was last summer, wasn't、yeah. it? Last yeah, summer you came and、uh, shared with、uh, with us at Life Church Port Leash, and we had a a wonderful、uh, kind of response from the church. So we have a number of people that are sponsoring children. Through compassion, and、um, so I just wanted to take an opportunity、uh, to talk with Darren and have him share a little bit more with us. Maybe give us an update for those that are sponsoring kids,、um, and maybe you just introduce yourself a little bit, Darren,、um, for those that haven't got to to meet you and hear your story.、Um, maybe some of what you do would that be all right? Yeah, sure.、Um, we'll be able to tell from my accent.、Um, I'm originally from England and. I moved here at the beginning of 2016,、um, but was working in Ireland for probably a couple of years before that. So I was commuting backwards and forwards. And、um, but I've been working for Compassion as an organisation for over ten years now.、Mm. And、um, I'm married to a lady called Erica, who is from the States, but she has Irish citizenship. So I always joke if Brexit went really badly. I could stay in Ireland because of my American wife, <laughs>、uh, and I live down in down here in Wicklow in Delgany. So I'm really suffering for Jesus. With I've got a view of the、um, the Sugarloaf the one way, and I'm about two and a half three kilometres from the beach the other way. So, poor guy. Yeah, about me. You know, I'm really enjoying life, and yeah,、uh, yeah enjoying living in Ireland. It's been great. That's awesome. Yeah, you're really suffering there, S- especially、yeah. this week. So beautiful. Yeah, absolutely.、Um, yeah. I, you know, Ireland is a beautiful place to live, and we're so blessed to be here. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was just remembering、um, the story that Sean Malarkey told me、yeah. about his connection with you a little bit, and the decision to, for his church, because he pastors St. Mark's up in Dublin. And、yeah. um, he was—I think he was at a football match—and he was telling me about the happiness rating or something like that. Do you remember that story? Because we, because、yeah. we're sponsoring、um, in, at Life Church in Port Leash, we're sponsoring kids from Togo.、And、yeah, so I'd love to hear that story. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So、um, I know that Sean had、uh, been sponsoring children for quite a while.、Um, so each one of his children, he he got them to sponsor a child. I think he paid for it, but <laughs> they're writing the letters to the kids.、Mm. And、um, one of his children was sponsoring a little girl in Togo, in West Africa. And I was asking him, where would where would you like to partner、um, as Christian Churches Ireland? Where would you like to partner in which country? Because we work in twenty five different countries around the world. And、um, he said he, he had a look at where his children were sponsoring. And it, the, I think it was the European or the World Cup was on at the time, and the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland had been had、uh, they'd done a survey and found out they were the happiest football supporters. Okay.、Uh, in in the tournament,、okay. and、um, then they so he did a little like survey to find out where was the saddest place in the world,、um, where people said they they weren't happy with their life. And he found out it was Togo in West Africa,、mm. and so he came back to me and he said, "Well, why don't we, as a nation, 
you know, as a church, but even then as a nation, as a group of churches, and then as a nation. If we, if we want to, why don't we partner with Togo? That would be a nice idea. And then we could all do that together. And um, now some churches partner in other countries if they have connections, you know, but it was an invitation then, if you want to do something with others together, then we can make an impact in one place. And Togo is a population of around 7 million, just under 7 million people. Mm. So comparable in size to Ireland. Mm. Um, but other than that, very different. Yeah. Different. You know, yeah. And, and you've been there, I, I assume. Yeah. I would say that even because I've, I've visited in the developing world probably around about 30 to 35 times different countries, maybe about 12, 13 different countries. Togo is probably one of the worst places I have ever been mm. in terms of seeing poverty. Because some countries you go to and you might go to the capital city and you'll see the middle classes are still doing quite well. But when you get out of the cities, you go to the slums or into the countryside and you see extreme poverty. But in Togo, you just, there isn't really even much of a middle class. It's just like the ruling class and then everybody else. So I know, for example, even when we were there, and this is way before any of this pandemic, this was like a few years back, we found out there was one major hospital in Togo, and that was in Lomu in the capital. And they said that there were people even like on the floors queuing up for tests and things there, just waiting. So we just thought, wow, if something were to happen, the chances of you getting any good treatment were negligible. That was then, let alone now. Yeah, so, so tell me, um, Darren, what about now with the coronavirus stuff? Is, is there any kind of update on what's going on there? Or how is it affecting Sure. You? Yeah, I mean, world, worldwide, what we know is that 821 million people every night go to bed hungry. So that's 10 times the size of, the, of Germany's population go to bed hungry every night. We knew that without the pandemic, 135 million people, so that's twice the size of the, the UK population, will starve to death by the end of 2020. And what we know now is with COVID-19, there's another 130 million to add to that figure now. Wow. So what, what we're finding is that in Togo, for example, they're in a three month lockdown. Um, now imagine this, if you're living in a slum area and there's seven or eight of you to a home, a slum dwelling, like a shed for us, you can't keep any social distance. If the virus takes a hold in, in the slums, it's going to be horrendous. If you live in the countryside and you've been locked down, then you can't farm at the moment. So therefore you're going to leave your, lose your harvest. Mm. And then you're not going to be able to sow for the next season. So there might be two or three seasons in a year, but you're already in you know serious problems mm. so compassion are doing right now in, in togo and in other countries is that we're giving them the necessities right now so they're not working so they're getting food packages they're still getting the immunization programs are happening yeah um, and they're getting taught about you know just the simple things that we would take for granted but we've been taught a lot about even in ireland over the last few months about hand washing you know mm doing that more often and so we're just trying to do everything to, to mitigate the circumstances that we mm. cause them problems so that's what's going on at the minute um, the compassion offices have shut down but people are working remotely and they're still talking to the church leaders where the partner churches are to try and help them with whatever their current needs are to try and yeah. help them. yes so so you guys partner with churches and kind of work through them um, mainly and um, and so so right now in this season it sounds like you're trying to kind of um, do some special stuff uh, yeah. to mitigate the the problems and in in a kind of in in general what what are the projects like there and how are you helping them or what's what's okay that like? so normally on a project would, would um, will be hosted at the local church. So the children um, will go along to the project once a week where they would have a special day 
where they would do extracurricular work, educational work, but they'd have fun as well. And they would be taught things from a Christian worldview point. Um, so they would get a lot of godly wisdom, biblical wisdom in, built into them. Mm. And then families, of course, then they get connected to the local church as well. But at the moment, obviously those projects can't be open. Yeah. The healthcare workers are still going there and then trying to help the families. But the, the children aren't gathering together. So you would have up to 250 to 300 children per project meeting together. At the moment, that's had to stop. Mm. So it's just trying to meet them and help them with their basic needs, whatever they are right now, yeah. uh, best way that we can. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's all hands on deck, really. I just want to encourage everyone who sponsors, who gives, and just say thank you so much. Because yeah. I know it's really difficult at this time, especially if we've got fear of losing our own jobs. Mm. And also, I know after four weeks, I remember being locked in, I'm thinking, my mental health was suffering. You know, I was like, I was finding it hard because I'm used to just like driving around all, all over Ireland and across Northern Ireland. I was yeah. finding it really difficult. So I just want to thank people and say, thank you for your continued giving. It, mm -hmm. It's really making even more of a difference right now in just helping them with their basic needs and requirements. In their yeah. family. Continue to write when you can. It may take a little bit longer to re for those letters to come back at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but just, yeah, just continue to do all you can. And thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Darren. I, we, my family really loves it. And I think that you guys do a great job. I was just pulling out, like we, you guys sent us a picture of our boy, Josepha. And so we pray for him and, um, and then, um, my kids write him little letters. So they have, they send us like this. Wow. Because he, yeah. he's young and he fills it out. He writes in French. But what's awesome is because that's, you know, they, that's one, that's the main language, I suppose. They have their tribal languages as well. But then they also send a translation. And um, so we look at that with our kids. And I think it's really cool that you can do it like snail mail, but you guys also send um, email. So yeah. we can write them through the internet. And we got this good pack. We got a cool pack or just, just to show people because I think it's, I think you yeah. guys just do such a great job. And so initially you get this pack and it tell, it kind of introduces you to the child that we sponsor and gives some of his story and his location. So it helps yeah. us to pray and, you know, you got all kinds of stuff. You even have a business card there for praying to remind us to pray. And um, so I just appreciate that you guys do a good job and, you know, you make it easy for us to connect with them. And, but obviously, you know, that the heart is that we're connecting with them and blessing their lives. Yeah. And um, so thank you guys. Thank you, Compassion, as well. Because, you know, you, you enable us to kind of be blessed because it's more blessed to, to give than to receive. And so that's a blessing. Well, the, amazing thing, the, the amazing thing, the whole thing about this his life church in Port Leash. There's a church in Togo. And what Compassion are doing is just connecting in the middle so that you as a local church can fulfill, help you to fulfill what you're doing. Because you're doing so much around your local area as well. Yeah. We appreciate it. It's hard to be able to sort of, um, you know, connect to the developing world and understand what's going on there. So we just want to thank you as well for it. Yeah. We, just with the letters. You know, those kids will just keep those letters in little tins under their bed for years to come. Mm. So just encourage everybody, don't stop writing to them, just send those little letters because they'll just encourage them in the darkest moments, you know. Yeah. And their families too, and their families, because what you do helps their whole family. Mm. That's so good. So if, um, if somebody, you know, is watching this and they, this is their first time hearing about it, what would they, how could they respond now? Well, um, first of all, to know it costs 30 euro to sponsor a child yeah. per month. So that's a euro a day, effectively. Mm. And 83% of that will go directly to help the child. The other 17% is administration and marketing costs, that sort of thing. So you can check all of that online just to see the accountability of how the money gets to where it's supposed to be. Um, 
but it would be great if people, if, if anyone was interested in, say, the sponsoring a child, they could contact you at the church there. We're going to send you through some profiles from child profiles uh, for children that are available to sponsor in the project where you already sponsor. So it means there's a connection there, if they're interested in that. Um, if it's just a general donation, they can go online at compassion.ie and there's a way of just donating online. And that will go into a general fund and that will help right now yeah. uh, children and families that are in need. Mm. And I encourage you because, you know, the Bible tells us that the world of the generous grows larger and larger. And sometimes it's counterintuitive and we sort of think to ourselves, oh, right now I need to batten down the hatches and look after myself. But God's economy is one where he says, if you just sow something now, and that's not just about compassion, but it's in any, anywhere with our local community as well. You know, maybe food banks locally just say, do you know what? I could give a tin of beans to the local food bank. I'm just going to give a little bit of myself, a little bit more of myself. And I think that just is a beautiful setup for us because God sees our lives and says, don't worry, I've got your future sorted as well. I agree 100%. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Uh, really appreciate it again, Darren. It's really cool. Uh, I love the name Compassion in Jesus' name. Yeah. I always think about Jesus' words, you know, do unto the least of these and do it to me and share a cup of cold water in my name. Just wonderful stuff. And so, again, thanks for, you know, enabling us and just making this connection point with us and all to the glory of God. And may these kids be blessed and. We're just going to keep them in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks. Man. We're going to see some great um, stories and testimonies. Link into um, Instagram, Compassion Island, at mm. Compassion Island, and also the Facebook page. You'll see daily posts there, so, and even good news stories of things that are happening. Okay. Right. So they're just like normally like one minute clips, 30 second clips. So um, yeah, just follow us at Compassion Island on Instagram and um compassion uh, compassion facebook uh okay. site on facebook and you can get updated with it, everything that's going on at the minute today if anybody is interested again darren mentioned it contact me so darren's going to send me some of these some packs and so then i can pass these on to you even if you're not in port leash i'll get this stuff to you wherever you're at and you know if you want if you want to um, connect with Togo and bless some of these kids there. So, thanks, man. It's been amazing. I know I was going to be with you on June the 21st, but this is great too. And I look forward to being with you in some time when we can all meet again. Absolutely. So, um, just be encouraged, everyone. Uh, let's look outside of ourselves and, and uh, you know, when things are difficult, let's just see how we can help somebody else.